In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Greetings, beloved of the Lord. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. Today is Wednesday, the 6th of March, 2024. It is Wednesday of the third week of Lent, Church Year B. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that schooled through Lenten observance and nourished by your word, through holy restraint, we may be devoted to you with all our heart and be ever united in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 1 and verses 5 to 9. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 147. The response to the psalm is, O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. The Gospel is taken from St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 17 to 19. A meditation is drawn from the first reading. Moses spoke to the people, saying, And now, O Israel, give heed to the statutes and the ordinances which I teach you, and do them, that you may live and go in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, gives you. Behold, I have taught you statutes and ordinances as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do them in the land which you are entering to take possession of it. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and ordinances so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Only take heed and keep your soul diligently lest you forget the things which your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The theme for today's meditation is Keep the laws of God and the Church and teach others to do same. Keep the laws of God and the church and teach others to do same. Dear good people of God, Generally, people hate laws because laws seem to limit their freedom to do as they please. People want to feel free and move to wherever they want to go. But with the laws of immigration, you cannot cross borders as you may want. The movement of students in boarding houses is limited within their confines. Crossing the line is breaking bounds, tantamount to expulsion. Yet, you will agree, rules and laws help to govern society, to make it civil, fair and just for everyone. Imagine a game with no rules, a football match with no referee. Respecting laws is meant for our good, for the good of others as well. If there was one nation that upheld the law, it was Israel. The law was what mattered in the life of every Jew. 
We also have native laws, customs, and traditions that bind a particular people from a particular area. When God chose Israel as a people, he gave them laws to govern them, to make them distinct from other nations. This is what the first reading of today explains. Moses brought the law from God to the people. When we accept to be members of a society, of a group, or of a country, we accept all the laws that bind us. Some even do so by public oath, swearing to uphold the laws that bind them. Before joining groups and before final dedication, would-be members are given the bylaws of the group to study and are even tested on their knowledge of the laws and constitutions. There were two great pillars on which Israel as a nation was built. The law, symbolized by Moses, and the prophets, symbolized by Elijah. Often in the life of the Jews, we often heard them referring to Moses and the law. This is what Moses taught us. This was the law that Moses gave us. The first five books of the Bible are known as the Torah, the law, because in them, we find the laws that governed Israel as a nation. Everyone and every action was judged and analyzed on what the law said and what the prophets taught. Seeing the way Jesus acted, especially vis-a-vis -vis the law, how he broke the law of the Sabbath, he did not even wash his hands before eating and his disciples did same, the people thought that he was a rebel, leading a revolution against the law. But Jesus told them, he did not come to abolish the law nor the prophets. He came to fulfill them. This is the gospel passage of today. He is a fulfillment of the law and the prophets. How to see and how to apply the law? The people had the law, yes. They held the law in high esteem but they were very legalistic. They were keeping the law for keeping sake. And Jesus makes them to understand that the spirit of the law is greater than the letter of the law. And this is why he will even be challenged if he was greater than Moses who gave the law to them. In him, that is Jesus, comes the completion of the law of Moses and the words of the prophets. This is why Moses and Elijah appeared on the mountain of his transfiguration as testimony that Jesus indeed is the law in its fullness and the word of God by excellence through the prophets. Looking at the readings of today, dear friends, it is important for us to understand that law is good. The church does not contradict or deny that any society should have its laws, be the traditional laws, be the civil laws, be the ecclesiastical laws, be the even personal laws. Some people have their personal laws that govern their lives. The question to ask ourselves is, how do we see laws, especially God's laws? Do we see them as principles and guidelines to help us attain heaven or as a burden hindering our freedom? Some of us even openly revolt against laws. That law so, me so, I no go keep them. That law, I will not keep it. Some of us say so openly. And we coach others not to keep the law. Today, Jesus tells us that we should be able to get the law and not only keep the law, but we should teach others to do same. This is what Jesus says in the gospel of today. We should listen to the law and teach others to do same. Whoever then relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But he who does them and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Gone are the days when parents handed down to their children the laws of the church and the laws of God. True, sometimes we focus more on tradition. This is what tradition says the native laws and customs of our people, which is good. It is good to hand them over from generation to generation. But what about the laws of God? What about the laws of the church? 
In some of our churches now, even during morning prayer, we hardly hear the loss of the church. But this is what, as we grew up as young boys learning doctrine, we used to recite by memory. The loss of the church, the loss of God. Some of us even openly revolt against these laws. What about the loss of the church? The many things that the church has told us to do. Keeping fasting on the days that the church has said we should. Going to church on the days that the church has said we should. Keeping the loss of the church and all of those. What about the loss of your congregation, your institution, your group or association? There are some members who keep paying fines upon fines because they break every law of the group or institution or association. What about the loss of our countries? Mind you, Jesus was a law keeper. He too kept the laws. He gave an interpretation that was perfect. He kept the law of circumcision. He kept the law of going to Jerusalem every year for the temple worship. He kept the law. And so Jesus wants us to keep the laws because the laws first are good for us. We should keep them and do them for our good, beloved. See the laws as meant for your good. If we see them as hindering us, we will not apply them. If we see them as limiting us, we will not apply them. But the laws are meant for our good. Be they individuals, be they even in marriage. When we make those laws, binding us as couples, binding us as friends, they are meant for our good. When we keep those laws, beloved, it is also for the good of our neighbor. Because as you have your rights, your neighbors also have their rights. And so those laws are meant for us to respect the rights also of our neighbors. And what is more, when we keep those laws, beloved, it shows just how much we love God. Let us pray for that grace that we may keep the laws and teach others to do the same. And even as an individual, you are not convinced of the laws, please do not pull others along with you. There are many who do not keep the laws and try to pull others along with them to do the same. Please, beloved, keep the laws out of love of God, out of respect for Him, out of love of our neighbors and for our own good, and teach others to do the same. Let us pray for that grace that we may be law-abiding, especially to keep the laws of God and the laws of the church. Evaluate yourself today and ask yourself, are you law-abiding? Do you keep the laws of God and do you keep the laws of the church? Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>